Hey folks, man, this is Monk. We are back with another episode of Classes of Cinematics, man. I'm joining us always with Bobby Blockbuster. Yo, yo, yo. Yeah, man. And uh, it's kind of crazy. It's kind of a sad, uh, you know, what inspired us to make this episode. But we're going to be talking about um, the film Goodfellas. And what was the year that this came out? I want to say 1990. 1990 crime drama. Yo, that's crazy. Same year as um, Ninja Turtles. Yeah, Dang, yo, I was young when this yeah. came out, man. Man, yeah, definitely. This definitely wasn't on the radar. I didn't see this later on until I was um, maybe in college, I believe. And this film was directed by Martin Scorsese. Um, the cast is stacked, dude. We've got uh, Ray Liotta, rest in peace, man. Uh, Robert De Niro, Joe Pesci, Lorraine Bracco, Paul Servino, Frank Vincent. Um, Christopher Cerrone, Michael Imperioli, <laughs> yeah. okay, a spider, yeah. <laughs> Tony Sirico. Um, it's, it's so many people, man. Gina Mastro Giacomo, whose names is wild, bro. Yeah, Sam L. appearance, Sam L. Jackson, um, Paul Herman, Debbie Mazar, um, Frank DeLeo, Vincent Pastore, you know, like, like it's, 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 it's crazy how many people are in this film would also go on and do other, you know, gangster related stuff right here, man. Yeah. Um, but the plot of this thing, man, is as follows. So a young man grows up in the mob and works very hard to advance himself through the ranks. He enjoys his life of money and luxury, but is oblivious to the horror that he causes a drug addiction and a few mistakes ultimately unravel his climb to the top based on a book wise guy by nicholas uh Pileggi. and i do want to point out henry hill the character in here played by ray Liotta, is actually a real person so mm -hmm. a lot of events in this film are true events yeah. um you know even though you know you've got your little um movie the, and the yeah, 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 yeah 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 man but, but rest in peace of ray Liotta, man this yes. is probably his most uh memorable role he's been in a lot of films but rarely has he had the, the opportunity to be the the main lead, you know? And um, but but this is like a monster, man. This is like a career defining, you know, role, you know, doing this thing. And it's interesting. It's not um um uh Scorsese's first mob related film, but I think it's the most impactful. I, I definitely do yeah. like Mean Streets, but I feel like Mean Streets is kind of the starting of what would later on come into this. I feel like Mean Streets was more about a uh, characters side characters that were yeah. in taxi driver you yes. know versus really taking this deep dive and uh presenting this thing you know the the way that he did it man so uh what, what stands out was one of the things that um hits, hits about well, this film obviously the 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 characters you know the um the cast mm -hmm. spot on a-listers um but the characters that they play in this film you know it, it almost feels like everyone is a front runner. Everyone is a lead because I mean, even our secondary characters, when they are on the screen, we are fully engulfed and engaged into what they are bringing to the table at that point in time. And, you know, that's just a testament to the way that the story is told as a whole, you know what I mean? And the way it's, it's shot and directed. So, you know, um, definitely, you know, I, I take my hat off to, you know, yeah, to the Bill casting. Bessie, I think stands out a lot here, man, even though he's not our main He's doing a great job playing this Nikki character, man. Like, like as far as supporting characters, he definitely beefs this up. Um, you know, De Niro's here is Jimmy Conway, who plays an important role, but mm -hmm. but he's also a more mellow, understated character. Like he's he's about his business, so so he's not yeah. as as crazy and loud mouth as uh you know Pesci is. I thought um uh, Lorraine Bracco was crazy as this in this as well as you know Henry Hill's you know wife eventually and, and love interest man you know and not for nothing Paul Sorvino as being Paulie you know I mean he like he he commands the screen whenever he's on I mean the dude barely talks and that's just a testament to the character that they're portraying in this film of mm -hmm. him but whenever the 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 camera is pointed in his direction like you are fully engaged into what this mm -hmm. man is going to do what strings he's going to pull or how he's going to call the shots that he calls mm -hmm. yeah um another one thing that stands out for me at least is um the decision to do that voiceover man and i and i think for me that's one thing that makes this film stand out and um it's probably one of the issues 
that I had with the Irishman, you know, I feel like that film might have benefited from a voiceover to carry us between moments because you see him, he, he pulled this off in this film as well as um later on Casino, you mm -hmm. know, what you did after this and and those films benefit like so well. It's, it's almost like you have a, um, you know, uh, um, it's, it's, it's like a, a, a first hand account, yeah. but but you're also being guided in yes. a way, you know, yes. you know, pick out this moment, look for this. And, you know, and at the same time, we're being introduced, it's fleshing out the world, it's fleshing out the characters, you know, and, and also giving us more insight into the character because we're in Henry's head, you yep. know, so he's narrating this and experiencing you know, this through his life, you know, with this narration, we're getting a handful of quotables. I mean, think yeah. of how many things that he says while he's narrating this film oh. that we've heard later on in life. You know, ever since I can remember, I wanted to be a gangster mm -hmm. or the whole part part where he's like, F you pay me, F you yeah. pay me. I yeah. Man, like like so much of like 90s rap, mid 90s rap is this movie. Dude. Yes. Like, like so many scenes. Um, and, and like and it's crazy because I saw this movie after had been exposed to so many things so it's like i'm looking at the um the um the jay-z video for yeah. um you know ain't no and and it's just like how much money you mean and she's like this much and i'm like and, and then when i finally watch this film and i see the scene where she does it yeah. i'm like oh my god yeah that's where this came from and, and it's just in so many moments like that were happening for me because like this film was 90 i didn't see it till 97 so so, so its influence was already out in the world i yes. just wasn't aware of it and i hadn't you know encountered it yet man and and seeing the impact that it was you know having on the culture man and, and yeah and, and i think like that like i said that decision to do it that way it is also an interesting rhythm at the beginning of this film i think as we're meeting henry like going from his young childhood from that want to be a gangster scene until he's full-on fledged um in there and and, yes. and about to do this big heist that they're working toward but it, it it's, it's almost like a it's done in this sizzle reel trailer kind of fashion, man. It, that reminds me a lot of um, maybe the opening of uh, Full Metal Jacket or yeah. or even Armageddon at, at times. You know, as they're setting, it, it's, it's just moving from point to point, and it's and he's guiding you along. And the music, the music yes. is carrying it like yes. throughout that. Like that's another thing that he didn't bring back to the Irishman. New yeah. like, like it's that it, it's carrying you through, man. It, it feels like you know. When, when they were making this movie, the director never even said cut. Like mm -hmm. they're just, it's just, it, it, it flows so smoothly. Mm -hmm. And you know, this is, you know, this, this movie right here, it's got to be like the blueprint of mob lifestyle. You know what I mean? There are other movies that have came out, you know, yeah, yeah, there was years years before. after this, but this one kind of gives us that first class seat mm -hmm. from him being a youth into being an adult into what the the mob the mob like fully entails. Yeah, because I feel I feel like he's dancing around it. Um, once again, like I keep bringing up Main Streets. I love that movie, but but Main Streets, it was like you get the sense that the guys in Main Streets were people who were circling around his life and trying to get to where mm -hmm. Henry was, whereas Henry was really in it. You know, yeah, like the the Main Street guys, they feel like mostly um, knuckleheads and you know and wannabes. Right. You know, but 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 then you see. This is the guy that, that they will probably be answering to Henry, like like trying to, you know, get work that he's giving them or, or you know, you know, versus being him. You know, they want to be him, but but this guy's really in there doing it and and and, 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 and you know, and being about it, dude. But what we see in this film also is that even though he is well respected and he is rubbing elbows with these guys, he also could never level yeah, up. He, has he, re he reaches yeah. the ceiling um, due to you his know lineage. He's you know he's not you know he's not really one of them. You mm -hmm. know, and, and that's putting a it's like a glass ceiling. You know yep. what I'm saying? Yep. So so the, the, this is the most you could do as far as I. It's not really speaking on how successful he could be outside of that. But if he wants to be recognized and grow, you know. It's and like he's got he's only he's only he, 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 so he'll always just be like a, a henchman mm -hmm. in a sense you know what i'm saying be he's not never going to be, be made, made he's not going to be yeah. made which would therefore make him you know never be untouchable i mean you know what i'm saying unless like, they want to touch unless they want to touch him you know what i mean <laughs> and that yet yet again to your point it's a testament to how this story is told like this mm -hmm. this film like it plays almost like like three stories at one time. I mean, you're getting you know you're getting the the, the past, the present, 
and what then can be with also the sprinkle of the the romance element with him and uh what's going on with his girlfriend and mm -hmm. wife and you know what's going on with these other characters like with joe pesci and, and them pushing him to to want to be made but then with him just not being level-headed enough to be able to, mm -hmm. to achieve that you know because he's not following the rules mm -hmm. you know what i mean yeah man yeah this is just great in those regards man um and I guess um, do we speak on? We spoke on the young um, actors. Oh yeah, um, yeah. It's, it's just it's just so much um, greatness, man. Because you know Henry Hill's doing a great job here, but then you got him buffeted by people like De Niro, like Pesci, Sorvino. They're just um, fleshing this thing out and bringing this world to life, man. But but another aspect that I, I really do like is the story, man, because. We're establishing a good character. That's one thing. Yeah. So, so this is going to be our guy. We're, we're learning a lot about him. And then there's kind of that middle part where we're getting this this bigger plot in the play. That they're making a play for this. Um, I think it was called the Latunza Heights. Yeah. And you know they're trying to steal all this money that's passing through this airport. And the, the complexity of it is kind of interesting, man. Without getting into any um, uh, they don't really get into the full details of it, but you know some of what's going on. I mean, it doesn't Ocean's Eleven us, yeah. you know, but all we know is they have an inside player because of it, that whole bar scene. Man. But it is equally as complicated, especially with all the characters that are involved. And, yeah. and the interesting thing to me is, is that that montage we get in the middle after it goes down, which is which is a, a really great moment. But then um, the, the aftermath of, of like, yo, keep your mouth shut. Yo, lay low. Don't lay, overspend. Don't overspend. Yes. Don't bring, don't make it hot. And then you also got the, the the element of the people that haven't gotten their wheel greased, so to speak. Mm -hmm. yet. Like the ones that were like, "Well, I put you on. Where's my cut?" You know. Yeah. So 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 like it, it's not a film that that I don't think. I mean, in some sense, you know, this, this stuff is presented in a way it kind of romanticizes a little bit. But when we get to the end, it's like, yeah, this is not really a lifestyle you want to be involved in. Man. Yes. There's a lot of, yes. there's a lot of murder. There's a lot of paranoid murder where, yes. where like that guy was probably going to be all right. But, but you guys, but they're so, um, um, careful about covering their bases and covering their asses and making sure there's no loose ends. Like, yeah, I mean, to your point, like, nuts, man. The, the, the first, uh, you know, 75% of this film, everything is being glorified. It's being presented to us in a way like, man, this is the life. This mm -hmm. is this is something that, you know, if you if you decide to go down this uh this road, this side of the tracks, these are the rewards. It, it's, 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 so it's great. But then when things go south, like it's just it's hit after hit after hit. I mean, it, it, it touches on things like loyalty, trust, um, you know, and then you know, backstabbing people snitching you know bringing everybody down uh, along the way you know to, to save their own hide i mean and these are all elements of the mob life the mob aspect that we've seen in other films and this mm -hmm. one as well that these things are frowned upon but you know this one this this film it does a great job mm -hmm. in showing us how people can be pushed to that point just to save their own their own hides which is it respectable no but when you see what's 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 kind of stuff mm -hmm. is going on, it's like I mean, dang, you know, uh, no one knows what they'll do until they're in that kind of a hot seat. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. and this this film does a great job in showing us, you know, how how those transitions can happen. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's, 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 it's a like you know, apart from the story and the actions and all that, it's it's actually still like a really well shot film, man. Like when you're looking at, I mean, it's almost a period piece because we're we're, we're it's taking us to these um these eras, man. Like you know the cars and stuff. So we're looking mm -hmm. at probably the like maybe the seventies and you know what I'm saying in the eighties, and it's doing a good job of capturing that. But but the camera work is really great, man. Like like there, there's certain moments that that play out really well. Like uh, yes. I'm thinking of um. The scene where he um, first takes out uh, Lorraine Brocco's uh, character uh, to the restaurant, man, and, and this is like this really long, extended shot of yeah. them walking through the the restaurant. It doesn't cut. Everyone has to be on their p's and q's and make the right moves at the right time to make this work, and and it pulls it off, man. And it, 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 I feel like the film itself, as he's romancing her, the film is romancing us. It's yeah. just sucking us 
deeper and deeper, you know what I'm saying, into yes. this world, dude. Absolutely. And another scene that sticks out to me uh, heavy is when, um, I want to say it was Billy. Um, I can't remember his whole name. His name was Billy, the guy who just got home from jail. He was a made guy. Mm -hmm. And they're throwing oh, a party. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, uh, Ray Liotta, De Niro, and uh, Pesci, their characters are, are in the bar as well. And he's just, I mean, he's brushing them off like they're nothing. He mm -hmm. takes shots at uh, Liotta and De Niro's character for, uh, for being Irish. Mm -hmm. And then when uh, Pesci comes in, knowing that he's a little more notable at this point, he decides to bring up the fact that when he was younger, mm -hmm. he used to like shine shoes and stuff. And he's like, yeah, man, he, he would make my shoes look like a mirror and all this stuff. Then has the where for all to, you know, he sees that, that Pesci's getting upset, bucks back at him a little bit. They apologize and then takes another jab at him. Like, man, uh, go get your shine box. Mm -hmm. And that just it's a testament to, to Pesci's character because we know going up to this point that he is a hothead and you know he's liable to do anything and ultimately that's what leads him to his demise but um the way they shot that scene and they gave us this this kind of like this insight as to why he did what he did it almost makes it understandable like you, you watch it you're like man I mean the dude kept Get ripping on him, and what we knew of of Pesci's character up until that point is like, oh, no, it's like, worth murder, but it's dang, not, it's but not, but, but it's like, but I understand the way it was <laughs> shot, the way that you know, the way that the character buildup was brought to us and presented to us up until that point. It's like we know that this dude is touching the oven when it's hot. Mm -hmm. Like if, if there's anyone in the film that you know don't mess with, it's Pesci's character. You know, Tommy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, but, even but, but but then I guess it also speaks on you know with the ranking, like like you said, yes. he's a made guy now, so so it's also no one can and how he looks, you know, so like a militant mindset, yeah. down on those underneath. But it's, kind of it's, it's jacked up because you know, it, I mean, it's also a testament to people's character. How do you wield the power once you have it? You know, and some, people, and some people do stuff like don't get your damn box. Yeah, you know his saying? thing. Like, I mean, he keeps saying he's like, man, I did my time. He just came out from doing with a bid for whatever. We never even get into that. Yeah. But he's like, man, I did my time. I'm not gonna. Yeah, I'm not looking up to this dude. You know, you're beneath me, and you always will be. It just reminds me of uh, on uh, Sopranos when my man Polly got into it with uh, what's that guy's name? I forgot. He he came out the same thing. He got out of jail, and my man Polly was like, man, because because I think they was beefing over the trash routes. Yeah, oh yeah, because <laughs> he was stealing his customer, and he was he was like, man, I did time in the joint, man. He said, um, it, it, it entitles me to earn. And Polly was like, it entitles you to shit. Yeah. <laughs> and Polly was like, he said, he said, um, he said, in my day, you get points for staying out of the can. Yeah. <laughs> and and, you know, and my, it, was, it was, I love that exchange. You know what? So and, great, man. And to your point, in this <laughs> film, it also exposes us to the fact that, you know, even though you're engulfed in this, this, this criminal lifestyle, if you do get jammed, you do do time, you're on your own. Mm -hmm. All the money that you were making uh, prior to this or, or what you can do after you get out, the only thing you're expected to do is not rat yeah. and do your time. Your family's going to rat on you, friends. <laughs> you know, you're <laughs> not going to have no shit. kind of income because everything they're doing is under the table. Mm -hmm. Anyways, your, your family's not going to be taken care of, you know, and it's not necessarily because, you know, the powers that be don't want to. They just can't be affiliated with you while you're in jail because yeah. everybody's under the, the yeah. tight. Still like, standing the with these known felons. We're going to be watching you and yeah. making sure money I and mean, things because it, it's messed up. I mean, the only reason um, Henry kind of had an easier ride was because he was doing time with Polly and them. Yeah. So, so they were kind of together. But even at, then, you know, he's relying on his wife to, to sneak stuff in, you know, for him. Um, and he gets into the dope game, which, mm -hmm. you know, when it comes to what we see in this film, you know, they that is not something that is um, like highly endorsed. It's frowned upon well, well, in a sense. So this movie is kind of doing some propaganda because that's kind of false, man. Like in this movie, yeah, but in real life, nah, the nah. mob, they, they, yeah. they, they, they in that. They, if there's they, money to be made, they're they going to make it. Made, they gonna yeah. make it. Yeah. But then you see, like, there's a there's a part where, where Paulie pulls um, uh, Henry up at the cookout and he's like, look, man, what you was doing when we was in the pan? Yeah, that's one he was thing. Like, yeah, you, that's one thing. You was making your money. I'm not going to knock you. He was mm -hmm. like, but now we're Henry out. out. That is you can't do this and and henry looks him right in the face man he's like man i'll let you know knowing that he's about to go make a move right after he leaves the cookout you yeah. know 
So that's where it kind of comes into the, uh, you know, like you said, the ranking system and, and, and the loyalty trust aspect when, when one of the higher ups looks you right in the face and says, Hey man, if you know something, let me know, or you don't do this yourself because you're, you're under my wing, under my, you know, my umbrella, mm -hmm. you know, cause if you go down, I go down too, just off of affiliation, mm -hmm. you know, um, it just, I mean, the way that this film just like really emphasizes, you know, mob life in uh, on so many levels, be it some of it fabricated, some of it, you know, overemphasized. Like I said, this, this, this film is just, like I said, it's a blueprint for this lifestyle. Yeah. You know what I mean? This thing takes mostly, plays mostly in the seventies, late sixties, uh, in the seventies. Yeah. Years. I'm looking at some of the dates that are popping up on the screen, but yeah, but yeah, like, like it, it's one, it's definitely a, a great character study and. You know, I think that actors do a good job of just portraying, you know, what this world is. In a way, it does humanize these criminals, man. But And some people would could probably say it kind of glorifies them. It does. And, and I think because, you know, um, you know, he's kind of escaping that ultimate criticism because you're slapping on, you know, the penalty at the end. Yeah. But, 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 but what's interesting, man, you know, um, with the real life Henry Hill... You know, and you know the movie shows that he ends up having to go on witness protection, but after and what? I mean, his uh, diamond his folks out. But after a while, man, that dude was moving out here free, like like he yeah. was popping up on Howard Stern doing interviews. Yeah, uh, he wrote he books. Books. like like we knew he, he sold. Was, didn't, he, didn't he sell this story to them? Is he the uh, one who gave them this story, or did they? I'm not sure. Uh -huh. I don't know. Sure, I think this is based on a book on the oh, story. Oh, okay. You know, okay. so I don't. But I don't know. They're, they could they could have brought him on as a consultant at you know and just to. To get everything right but but you probably wouldn't need to you know considering how yeah um most of these movies like when, when we get to this stuff the facts are the facts but right. all the dialogue and all that interpersonal stuff that's usually you know the made-up parts you know yeah. that comes with the you know the adaptation but like i said man it's just a really great you know character study man like like yes. and, and i think by that i mean it, it's shining a mirror just to human relations even though these yes. guys are mobsters and, and you know and this is in their world but a lot of what's going on here translates to the real world man like yes. like, like i said like, like we got the scene just popped up where uh, um the shine box scene and yeah. it's just like you you see this all the time with people who have power orders for situations and instead of using it for good or even to bring people up they use it to reaffirm their position yeah, and belittle and, those and, around and them put their thumb on people's yeah. necks you know uh, and and that's it, and it's not respectable. It's not okay, you know. Mm -hmm. But like you said, we deal with this time and time again in life. And you know, every time I watch this film, you know, the 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 one thing that that stands out to me, you know, more than anything else, the characters is great, the story, but it feels real. Mm -hmm. You watch this film, sometimes you lose sight of the fact that you're watching a movie. It starts to feel like you're almost watching a documentary yeah. or life accounts of these individuals by how it's portrayed. I feel like that's a um, testament to his previous work, man, because, yeah. um, you know, especially like the earlier stuff, they just have a grit and, and a, yes. and maybe the, the way he's worked with a cinematographer, especially like, like um, you know, even parts of Raging Bull, man, like like some of these interactions you see, you see what's inspired that led yeah. to this film. Raging Bull, um, you know, um, Taxi Driver. Taxi Driver, yes, yeah. I, was, I, was, I, mean, I, couldn't, I couldn't pull it up. Taxi geez, Driver. Geez, you talking and about Mean Streets, man. Yeah, man. And, man. and the yes. Mean Street, Mean Streets is so overrated. A lot of people haven't seen that. And I, and I love how. I think what makes that one stand out for me a lot is the Harvey Cartel presence, man. Yeah. I wish they could have figured a way to put him in this one. Maybe he was busy, maybe he's working, or maybe he just didn't fit. But but he brings something to that 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 you know that I think could have also boosted up you know a character well, too. And at the same time, it also shows us how when a director and actors have a rapport and mm -hmm. they, they know what to expect from each other they can deliver us gold-plated packages when it comes to film mm -hmm. i mean look of all those films that you rung off was all scorsese and de niro mm -hmm. were in those you see what yeah. i'm saying and pesci was was in those you know ray liotta was a new face but i mean he if, one thing i've noticed about scorsese is when he gets something from an actor that he appreciates and that he wants more of mm -hmm. he will go back to them and yeah. they will go back to him yeah these are all frequent collaborators and it's interesting because then you would go on to get the irishman with mm -hmm. pesci um, um de niro and i forgot who was the other one and actually i think he brought um what's the name out for that he got um 
Pacino to end yes, that. So yeah, he did. That was interesting. But um, like I said, and then you know another thing that I like about this too is how they emphasize like the 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 dress, the the clothes aspect. How like you know stepping out. It's one thing to feel like a, bi- a million bucks. It's another thing to dress like a million bucks. Like that scene where he's still a young man and he's like, man, I'm 13 and I'm making more money than the hardest working grown men on my block and then he opened the mom over the door he's like mom what do you think you know i mean in this in the 60s uh, late 60s early 70s my man's wearing like a thousand dollar suit and probably has on thousand dollar gators too at the same time you know look like like gangster yeah they, i mean they <laughs> emphasize the importance of class even though you know to the outside looking in the things that they are doing uh the way they're, they're living doing their lives it's a lot of dirty but that, well, that's things. the thing that, that also like is a thing with me about them is like man these are like the grimiest dudes they're yeah. doing the dirtiest of dirt but but we give hey. them a pass because they put on a suit but block. you know what <laughs> you can get your hands dirty long as you look wow. clean <laughs> I mean, and, and they show us that and it's, it's like you know I, I love like i love every time you see everybody suited and booted I mean, you can tell these are, I mean, these are top designer, you know, suits and, and, and everything that they're wearing. And I, I'm just like, man, I would, I don't even know what I'd do if I could get me one of those, man. You know, I, I got suits and everything, but they ain't like that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and and uh, I guess also, man, this is a pretty, how long is this film? Oh, it plays, uh, it plays at two hours and 26 minutes. Yeah. So, it's, but it feels like it's, it's, it it, yeah. it feels like it's a, it's a, it's an hour long. I mean, it moves so fast. It, it does move at a, at a um, good pace because things are happening and and like and and I guess that's a testament because he had a long working relationship with this mm-hmm. uh, film editor, and I think that you know definitely helps you know with with how this thing um, came out, man. But but like like it, like I said, man, it, the the impact that it had on me when I first saw it, I was just blown away. Um, I you know what? I think I actually saw um casino mm. um but yeah, i just hadn't had seen this one man yeah. so so that was kind of a, a backwards thing for me and, mm-hmm. and like you said you know he's bringing in you know the same actors and um with different roles to to bring this thing to life but um yeah. but this thing it's a monster dude there's so many quotables so many great characters yeah, and- um the, the underworld the organization of that that information that you're getting man it definitely you know stands out man definitely and for me another reason why it plays so smooth is the way it glides us into the transitions mm-hmm. of the story i mean like i said there's there's no breaks it just it really feels like you're sitting at the table and everybody's just listening to somebody tell a story mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying with with no hiccups no no thought thought process involved they're just giving a recount of what happened and they they portrayed that on screen yeah, well that's what i was thinking about um the scene where um where nikki um you know um takes out um shushan dude man and that was a little bit interesting because we turn out later that nikki does have a play penalty because yeah. that was a made guy i mean you took him out but it's also interesting that they spared henry and jimmy like even though they helped them and they knew that they were there helping them but but at the same time maybe they were like well you didn't actually do it and maybe there's also the understanding that that's um you know we know you guys run together you guys are from the same crew and we expected you to to do that aspect to help him to help him you know do the at least dispose of the body and all that stuff that's two are bread but makers were, for them yeah but you weren't the uh, and yeah and also nikki had been slipping up with his um you know like he's in debt to the restaurant guy he he's kind of he's kind of messing up he's kind of reminding me of um um is he also nikki in casino or am i to call him nikki here wrong i don't think i was tommy he's tommy he's tommy in this tommy in this so so yeah so tommy's also kind of been slacking on his role like like, like what he's, he's supposed not, to be he's, doing he's, he's a hothead yeah and you hear uh paulie is making business to him that you know multiple times he's like he's a bad seed he's a hothead you know mm-hmm. but but the thing of it is is that like you know i i feel like why henry and uh de niro's character didn't get touched i mean because they're still earning yeah they're still they're still mm-hmm. feeding yeah. um Paul and, and plus, and plus tommy ultimately he was the one that that, that that did the murderous blows you know what i'm saying I mean, even though they you know they but also um you know, like you said, Tommy's not earning, but I wonder if he had been earning, would this still been excused? Because because it's still a lot of this still is about codes and symbolism and and and, and the, the order of things and yeah. the rules. And 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 I think 
he's going to get touched regardless if he's making money or not. He's going to have to well, he's going to have to atone for that. Man. And the thing is, I mean, we see what we're getting from De Niro and Leota as far as what as far as what they're earning, and they always talk about breaking Paulie off and mm -hmm. everyone else. I mean, De Niro he pulled off that 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 heist. You know, they said it was a six million dollar caper in the seventies. That probably mm -hmm. translates to I don't know how many millions in today's terms. And then you know, with with Henry, he was you know he had everything going on with the with the with the dope game and stuff and I, you know he was still shaving paulie off mm -hmm. you know and he wasn't asking de niro for anything off of his lip that's why yeah. de niro didn't apply no pressure on him mm -hmm. you know so and the thing is it's like well outside of well, also he, he wasn't being a hothead because yeah. de niro was going yeah. <laughs> de niro freaked out. Out, outside <laughs> of outside of being a hothead and outside uh -huh. of just taking people out and just being a being a bully and doing a lot of things that were you know yeah. started to come off as unjustifiable what else did tommy bring to the element yeah he he, he, he kind of you're just a grunt he lived his usefulness yeah, and it, yeah. like i mean like I, I i like i love his character i i like everything he brought to the table but once he kills spider that's when i like my my distaste yeah. it's like bro because spider you bro, know was doing and he been bullying spider the whole, the whole time, time bro he, you can tell like spider is at that point in his life he's probably like around the same age a little older than what henry hill was when he mm -hmm. first came in and pesci is just it's like you know you shoot him in the foot and then you start you know making a mockery of him because of that and then you decide to kill him just because de niro was busting your child yeah, it's like, like the, this um, dude demands respect from everyone but gives it to no one that's not yeah that's i not do want to thing. point out imperioli's um plays fighter and the craziest thing about michael imperioli he's trying to find his way in acting yeah every movie he was in at this period he died yes he's then died he some death and dude. then got killed in this he got killed by uh what's the name and uh uh dead president oh, God, he he got president it was terrible they put his they put his jam in his mouth <laughs> <laughs> i'm sorry <laughs> Yo, I was, mean, dude, he has died some of the worst deaths, you know. It, I mean, it was funny to me because, like, as soon as you saw him in um, any movies, man, like, it, it like it was just something bad was going to happen. To yeah, him. you know. Yeah, you already know. Well, I know one guy that's on the not going to make it list. Yeah, <laughs> man. Yeah, dude, it was crazy, man. But he's a good actor, though. Yeah, like, I mean, not good. to take nothing away from. I mean, he dies with grace. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he he he, he had to, um, you know, um, pay his dues to get that. Um, Dope role as Christopher and uh, Sopranos. Mm -hmm. He does in that too. He does in that too. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, but but I mean, as, as an examination of the mob, man, I like like um this is this is like um it's probably one of the best man that ever did. Yes. Um Another aspect of it though, I do got to address, man, because like it's one of my peeves with with um uh Scorsese, man, and somehow he works that into his. Uh, like all of his films, almost, almost well, at least. I already know where you're going with this. Dealing with this mob topic, but mm -hmm. with that N word, man. Yeah. And I think there's that that pops up like three times in this one, yeah. I believe, man. Like, uh, or maybe two, because yeah. I know there's the one, um, um, with um, um, concerning Samuel L. Jackson's character, and they're talking and about the heist. There's no the earlier is, on when they when he robs the truck, and yeah. then the guy runs into the to it's, the it's diner. So the yeah. wife is worried about the heist, and he's like, man, you know. It's gonna be fine, man. Only you know, n words, um, get away, stick up men get caught. You know, they fall asleep in the truck, and then and the other one that was great, like you said, I, I noticed that earlier that I forgot about that one, the, the restaurant, because him and Tommy are pulling a heist on uh, this truck, and they, they work out something with the yeah, driver, they give him money, they tip him, yeah, because he's just driving, he could tell, yeah. he's just, oh, I got robbed. What are they gonna do? Yeah, they're gonna prove it. Yep. He still keeps his job and they run around the next day, but but he runs back in the restaurant and makes a call to 911. It's like, yeah, man, these two N words stole my truck, and, yeah. you know. But it's funny to me, I'm thinking about this. I'm like, in, in the bigger scheme of things, I'm like, yo, bro, how many crimes were they just blaming on black people? Yeah. And it's like they didn't even do nothing, and now you're getting the stigma attached to it, but then. <laughs> Then the I don't know if he says it then, but then there's a speech about the the girls like uh, talking about how she thinks Sammy Davis uh, Joe Pesci gets is, mad uh, at and and yes. Pesci brings it up and it's and it's a weird thing. It's like all right, I'll, I'll I'll let you slide. I know these characters. This is probably how they think, man. We 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 know about the racial divides in America, but on the other hand, to me, it's like all right, you won't do that in this one film, cool. But then it just pops up in subsequent in every film. films that that he does, especially yeah. ones around this matter. I think one of the things I can remember that he didn't say it was maybe 
Uh, what was the one? Uh, bringing out the dead. You know, I don't yeah. think they mentioned that in there, but it's just crazy to me how he yeah. works it in there, man. Like and, it's and it, nuts, dude. And it's done. And it, it, it's so uncomfortable too. You know what I'm saying? Like when you watch this, <laughs> when you watch this, like it makes me uncomfortable. I'm like, man, ugh. like, like I like, like, skip those parts. I don't want to hear that yeah. shit. And, I, and, and, and then, I mean, it's using, like you got using great piece of yeah using the know, banter is bad but then in the context in the way it was used it makes it even even worse mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying i mean there, there's like there's no positive and, and like you don't need you know that kind of like you know shock from the crowd or that kind of oh mm -hmm. you know, or, or, or even worse like if you're if you're throwing this in there to, to kind of get some level of understanding from certain individuals that's even worse mm -hmm. so yeah man i don't i don't like that yeah i'm glad you touched yeah, on that because yeah, it's yeah. very uncomfortable it, it definitely every time you know like i, I, I got you know, face i think my face just saw i probably look like i wanted to punch the camera and readjust yeah, it's, it's a nutty feature man especially yeah. when i'm watching what was the one uh that one just got me because it's like man he's like well, let's do it now. Get out of the way. Um, and it's it seamless. Too. It's like, I was like, bro, like, you already know it's this, coming. This but how you, this how you, this how you gonna open the film on the party? That was like the first line, bro. But, yeah. yeah. So it's one of those things that kind of makes you wonder, like, you know, hey, man, we, uh, we get what you're trying to do on screen. But what's going on in that melon off screen? Yeah, you know? Yeah, that's a little wild to me, dude. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But other than that, man, I don't know, man. This this still a great watch, man. You know, so rest in peace to Leota, man. Yes, like all it, day. it's kind of weird. I was I was, you know, not to take nothing away from him, but but it, I feel like this is like his his one, you know, thing because he's probably started maybe a, a handful of films where he had the starring role, but there are great films that he's in playing. Yes really great supporting characters man but but this was probably it seems like you, like you do a film like this and your shit would blow up but it didn't for it him. didn't no he, he was get always the, a secondary yeah, character it's weird but one thing i will say is this it, I, I you know be, around the time when this came out yes he was a front runner in this there was another film that came out called unlawful entry mm -hmm. where he um it's him and kurt russell and then i can't remember the female actress but pretty much somebody breaks into kurt russell and his wife's house and then he's the cop but then he starts jonesing for kurt russell's wife and he starts like being like stalker type with mm -hmm. uh, you know in in the fact that he's a cop and oh man but it's it's a good movie that's that's probably that and what we talked about narc yeah narc, narc is great too man narc, narc was who was his co-star in narc uh, jason patrick man yeah, that go patrick yo patrick was oh man doing great stuff too he's hanging with the lost boys yeah, he was he was really great in that. He was so, great, yeah. Yeah, so um the fellas ninety uh unlawful entry in ninety two. Mm -hmm. Um yeah, no escape. I think that was another starring role of him. That was the I haven't seen that in so long. I can't remember how if that holds up, but can't that was remember. the one where then they had like a prison island and he got sent to it and he was trying to break out. It's like an action adventure joint yeah, with yeah, him. Remember. Um Ernie Hudson. Um, and Lance Erickson, that was, that was definitely kind of like a cyborg era. I know, kind of I know Unlawful Entry. I know Copland. Yeah, Copland was great too, but, but again, he's, 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 but he's, he's, he's secondary, secondary, man. That's all about Stallone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, and after that, he, Muppets from Space, wow. <laughs> Hannibal, I remember Hannibal too. He was a character side character in that. Um, I mean, but, and that's the thing too, like. Blow, you know, he was the dad of. Was, uh, that's that's just that's a testament to how impactful this film was in the role that he played because even as a secondary character they would mm -hmm. put his name up as as like an a-lister yeah. and people are like oh man ray liotta man whoa and i mean he would have a minimal role but i mean people would still like be happy to see him in the film you know what i'm saying so that's just is a testament to what he did you know in this in this film goodfellas man the yeah, narc was was great though. narc I think was great i came out to make, bring that up and it, um, and and gritty, yes, yeah that, that one's yeah. definitely going to come up on the show um, too yeah and he's john q too blow like i said those um things but but um smoking aces too wow that's pretty wild hogs was wild great. Hogs. was he the bad guy in wild hogs the, the anchor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yo that movie is so good the wild oh, hogs he's in the b fun. movie it's funny as <laughs> shit, man oh it's some some voice acting yeah. yeah man yeah yeah but this is a great one man definitely watch this and and also if you want to look into more just the, the true story of henry hill man um i think he passed away um a while ago man. yeah um let me see when did he die um I'd say it was like it was early mid 2000s yeah yeah it feels like um yeah. but just the story and the life that he led i mean ultimately he was a snitch but by the same time, i don't know man i think 
as I've gotten a little older and I've looked at some of this, these, these, um, these blatant big criminal enterprise guys, I'm like, man, you kind of need them, man. These guys are doing some bad stuff, dude. Like, it's one thing if you're doing your, your criminal exploits, but once the murders get involved, I kind of look at it as a little different, bro. Before he dropped it's down, remember, they tried to kill, uh, they tried 86 his wife, too. Remember, De Niro was trying to send his wife down the, the dark yeah. alley. She was like, hey, just check out those mates. De Niro was still trying to clip them loose. Still trying to, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, he passed away in June 12th of 2012. Oh, um, so, you know, but, um, yeah, he was born in 43, New York City. He had a nice little stretch on the earth, dude, but I think yeah. he died, like, just natural causes, man. Because, um, I think he was out here, um, um, still doing stuff, man. Yeah, so, all right, um. It's wild, because there's, like, pictures with him and, like, Ray Liotta. Yeah, he was, he, he came was, out of the Witness program in the early 90s. But, but that's the thing. I think most of the guys were locked up that he was dealing with, or who would even care to get revenge on him because, like the the mob and those Rico statues, they wreak havoc on their yeah. organization, man. Like they're a shadow of themselves of this day. Even uh, my man, um, who's the other guy? Um, Sammy G the Bull. The Bull. Uh, I think yeah. Sammy the Bull got um. He was out here yeah. living in witness protection and being blatant, and then he started dealing drugs again. I think he got caught with like a, in an ecstasy ring or something, man. You know, um, the dude Billy that uh Joe Pesci's character takes out. Um, he actually, they referenced that he's part of the Gambino family, which that was, was the whole uh, John Gotti lineage. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it, they, the, the way that they kind of intertwine them, you know, um, and from what it says on Google and stuff, that this was like, this was actual stuff, man. So some of it, um, some of it feels real, plays real, because it really, you know, there's a lot of truth behind it. Yeah, Sammy the Bull was arrested in 2000 for um, running a, a pretty much part of an ecstasy ring. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it's, it's man, it's as hard as one of the things, too. It's like, once you win that life, it's hard to really get out of it, man, you know? Yeah, but once you got to dime your way out of it, mm -hmm. yeah, I, I wouldn't think, like, running well, back to it. Well, that's part of it, too, because part of that mystique, snitches get stitches or rats get killed. And I mean, you're seeing some of this stuff now. Like, even look at the guy, um, 6 9 he's running around here, free bird, yeah, just and blatantly flaunting it. Like, so, so okay. it's kind of it, it's kind of a thing, too, man. I think that that helped the mob and, and some of these criminals and organizations don't snitch, don't tell. Yet, when you look into the history of a lot of these dudes, even Frank Lucas, they told. To get themselves out of trouble and, think, they're, and they're telling you that and hope that you don't tell on them but meanwhile when they back hit the wall it's man ain't no yeah, honor amongst fold. these man they fold. but the thing it's is no honor like, amongst these things i think <laughs> i think that you know the reason why they don't get touched is touched is because now they're they're quasi protected like if something happens to them they know that there's going to be some kind of backlash because they snitched and that it, so whoever touches them mm -hmm. you know it, it, it'll get it'll get exposed you know what i mean because of this this underlying protection aspect yeah. that they got yeah, but also too that it's they just don't have that power and that influence that they used to have and the, the streets is it's not man it's the game is jacked up yeah. out here man like yeah we don't condone killing but we don't condone snitching i don't either. want condone no condone, condone, condone no criminal activity but unless you're like treach from naughty by nature and you do your dirt all by your lonely then you there ain't you gotta go. worry about nothing so then you don't gotta worry about nobody <laughs> snitching you don't gotta worry about nothing else man mm -hmm. just if you get caught it's because you misstepped yeah man so um it's crazy dude um but yeah um i think that's it folks man we're gonna wrap this up man you know rest in peace ray Liotta, man oh, definitely man. go check out this film and and the other gangster classes man i think i think my favorite gangster out of all of them though is probably still scarface and i know there's problems with the portrayal and he wasn't accurately being nah. a cuban but i mean but scarface ain't never called nobody the n-word no he <laughs> didn't <laughs> no he didn't <laughs> but yeah dog uh, I think that's it, folks, man. We're going to wrap this up, man. This has been another Classes of Cinematics, man. we got more coming your way, folks, man. I, and we are seeing the response to the work that we're doing out here. And we highly appreciate that, man. I'll give that a thumbs up right here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Definitely, man. Thanks for tuning in. And mm -hmm. thanks for, for feeding us, man. Because when we see those numbers go up and all that, and the new subscribers and all that, man, that... 
definitely makes us feel good for putting out this show and it, it makes us think that our efforts are appreciated man so thanks a lot folks yes all day and just just to his point man you know just keep watching keep subscribing keep liking um as long as y'all keep doing what y'all doing we're gonna keep doing what we doing and we just we appreciate y'all for everything that y'all bring to the table we'll just keep doing this mm -hmm. yeah folks peace